So you want to get the best armor set in the game, huh? And you want to get it early. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have come to the right place. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to get the best armor set in the game, get it early, and show you some tips and tricks on how to get it without really having any kind of trouble whatsoever. This armor set is not only beautiful. Oh my god, this guy is just getting brutalized. Not only is it beautiful, but it stats on here are just ridiculous as well. Now, I do hope you all enjoyed today's video. And let's go ahead and get into this. Now, first up, we're going to go to this little set of ruins here. The Temple of Brigantia, I think, in your Vishire. We're going to have to do a lot of swimming, so you really want to make sure you enter this in the right spot. Uh, so when you get over to here, you're going to see some statues in the water to your left with that big statue there. If you drop down right about here and get into the water and dive down... You're going to see the entrance to this underwater cave. This is where we need to go. We're going to need to go all the way through this. And then at the very end, we're going to find our chest. And then we're going to have to swim all the way back as well. You definitely don't want to waste any air. There we go. So when we turn this final corner, we're going to see it. I don't know if there's a, an exit on the other side of this, but I'm not going to really worry about it. Because as long as you dive down where I showed you, you should have plenty of air to be able to just swim back out. Just don't uh, be scared to just keep activating this to make sure you're going the right way and just swim your way back out. For the bracers, we need to go to the northern end of Northumbria. And on the north side of the Stenwig camp here is going to be our way to get into this campsite. Now you'll notice here, it just it's absolutely crazy if you look at this camp for the first time. But there's this giant tree here on the north side of the camp. There's also potentially some like, I don't know if they're bobcats or some kind of lynx. Uh, but they're also in this area. You should be able to one-shot them with an arrow to the face. There's a couple different ways we can get in here. We can jump in through here or we can sneak in through this under spot. We're going to go like this. We're going to sneak around the edge of these buildings. And we're going to try and get into this room here. There is a person right in the front. But we might be able to sneak right past them and just open the door. And right in this chest is what we need. The Thane's Bracers. Now if you need some tungsten ingots, there are two wealth chests here. So you might as well grab these while you're here as well. Next up, we need to go to the western edge of the map to Gloucestershire. I know I just butchered that. Uh, there's also a Hidden Ones Bureau here for one of those pieces of armor. If you haven't gotten that yet, that's going to be down here. Uh, but we're going to need to go to the Aelfwood campsite here. And there's going to be this big dude right there. He holds two of the keys that we're going to need. Now, there is a skill that will really help you out with this if you are lower level. You're going to need the Advanced Assassination skill, which is really easy to get. This unlocks the ability to assassinate high-level targets. You'll be able to one-shot this big, chonky dude if you have this particular skill. Uh, so I definitely recommend getting it because it makes life so much easier if you do it right. There we go. As I was saying, if you stealth up on him and you have the skill, you can one-shot him. <laughs> A lot easier when you do it the right way. So we got the treasure room door key. Now we just need to sneak through this particular area. You can get up here however you want. I'm just going to go up this wall. And when you get to this top area, if you use your senses, you should be able to see right where the door is. There is a lot of people around, but you can assassinate them as well if you so desire. Or I could miss. I highly recommend assassinating them and not missing like me. Uh, but that door that you need to unlock is right here. I'm just not good at stealthing today. I swear, the second I go to record and I'm talking, uh, my brain and my hands just don't work together. But anyways, there's the Thane's Breaches. Next up, we're going to have to head to Winchester. There's going to be a bishop residence here. If you approach from the eastern side and jump over the wall, 
Uh, there's going to be a guy in front of this door, but you can sneak up from the back, jump up here, and then assassinate him, especially if you have the ability that I mentioned earlier. It makes getting into this building much easier. Once you are in the building, you're going to go to the central spot and climb up. That door is going to be barred, and we need to open that door. To do that, we're going to go to this back room here. And then inside of this back room is going to be this that we can move. Move that bad boy out of the way. Then we're going to shoot uh, the thing off the barred door. Run back around. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. You've got the Thane's cloak. Now the last piece is also in Winchester. This one's a little bit of a longer process to retrieve. But it's going to be at the old uh, Minster Hall here. And to, to, we're going to have to get three keys. And to get this one key at the very top tower, you're going to need to go to one of these middle bits. So that way you can jump to the edge here. At the very top, we got to get a key. Now in front of one of these, there we go, there's a spot we can slide under. And the key is going to be sitting right here. This is the first of the three keys that we need. Loot some stuff up here if you so desire. Then we're going to go ahead and jump off. Now, there are two more keys, each of which are inside of here. I believe this is the entrance over here. Yeah, I'm just going to jump off and just break my entire body. Now, one of the keys is going to be in one of these rooms. I believe it's all the way in the back. I'm going to climb over this wall. Grab this bad boy. Now we got to get the last key. Exit the room we just left or just looted that key in. I'm going to circle up these stairs and now we got to basically run to the back of the church and the hardcore parkour across the uh, the roof bit here. And the key will be seated at the very end of this. There we go. All three keys are now collected. Now to get the helmet. Now to get the headgear, you're going to need to go into this little courtyard that they have behind or on the side of the church here. And you're going to need to get into that window. Go ahead and shoot it down. And then in this room is the chest with three locks. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We have got the full set. I guess we didn't have to leap over it, but whatever. Now, this armor set looks freaking sweet. I think it might be one of my favorites. I love the red cape. The helmet looks really aggressive and cool. We can put our cape, our cloak on as well. And I just, I really love the way it looks. Now, you will get each of these pieces at the flawless quality, so you won't even have to upgrade them to this, which is really nice, especially if you're looking for something that's going to be really great at the beginning of the game, because we showed you how to do that really easily. Now, if you do upgrade it to max at the flawless quality on 42 armor, 32 light resistance, this has actually really high light resistance, which is pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, the, the stats across the board here are... Pretty much some of the best in the game. Now, if we compare this to one of the premium purchased items, we can compare it to the Valkyrie armor, which we have upgraded to the same level of upgrade here. Uh, you can see that the Valkyrie armor has 47 armor versus 48. Uh, light resistance is 29 versus 35. Now, the heavy resistance is uh, 38 versus 29. So you're getting slightly less heavy resistance on here. Uh, but I really like the light resistance anyways. And the stats, the bonuses on here are phenomenal uh, so we get increased to critical chance when pairing and we lose it when attacking from the back or attacking an enemy on the ground so if you're pairing people that are just standing up you're going to keep that increase to your critical chance so the bonus is plus 10 we also get an additional increase to critical damage plus 20 with this particular set which is phenomenal but now we got to upgrade this thing to mythical okay the cloak on this thing is sweet i'm a little sad that we lost the red but sweet baby Jesus, does this look good? If we lose the cloak here, or I could do that, 
If we lose the cloak, we just look like we're out to murder everybody. This set looks insane. And the stats on it, quite frankly, this is probably the best armor set in the game. Depending on what you think about the bonuses, I really do like the increase to your critical chance and the critical damage. You could swap this up with a couple different things here, but the stats on the mythical fully upgraded are magnificent. I will c uh, compare this to what I think is the hide for probably the best armor in the game. So we've gone to the chest piece here. I really love the mentor's robes. Um, so this increases your attack after critical hits and an additional increase to speed. Uh, the mentor's set is probably my second favorite set in the game. Maybe Suthane's. I really love the armor on here. You really can't go wrong with this because if you do fall into a sticky situation, the armor is going to really save you. It's, it's ridiculous. And the bonus on here, I would say... The Mentor's Robes and the Thane's Heavy Tunic probably tied for my top two armor pieces in the game. But the great thing about the Thane's set is you can get it extremely easy pretty much right when you get to England now that you know where all of these spots are. Especially if you upgrade that as Advanced Assassination, you are going to be good to go.